From Seminole Hard Rock in Hollywood, Florida, this is Poker Night in America. Hello and welcome to the Seminole Hard Rock Hotel, Casino and Spa. I'm Chris Hansen alongside Lexi Gavin Mather. Tonight we are covering the final table of the championship event here at the Seminole Hard Rock Poker Open Series. 1,100 entries at $5,300 buy-in means that the prize pool includes nearly $5.4 million with over 900,000 for first place plus the Guitar Tower Trophy. This event is technically a $3 million guarantee, so what do those numbers tell us, Chris? Well, it tells me that the guaranteed prize pool got nearly doubled. I think it's pretty obvious that people love coming to play here at Seminole Hard Rock. We see a ton of locals from the Southern Florida area, but also a lot of people who fly in from across the country and all over the globe. I'm definitely part of those folks. If I'm not at the table, and part of me wishes I was, of course, the second best place to be is here calling the action in the booth with the Poker Night in America crew. So, Chris, we're down to the final seven from the original 1100. Let's take a look at those remaining stacks. With blinds currently at 50 and 100,000 with an additional 100,000 big blind ante, our chip leader is Justin Liberto. He's got over four million in tournament earnings to his name and he's sitting on over 13 and a half million in chips. High stakes pro Chris Brewer sits second in chips with 9.7 million and two time WSOP bracelet winner Jim Colopy has 8.9 million. Fourth in chips with 4.7 million is Sergio Ido. He's got over $13 million in live tournament earnings, so that's definitely someone to keep your eye on. Behind Sergio is Raul Hernandez. Sixth in chips is Yugis Steinman with just 16 and a half bigs, followed by Ryan Gianquitti, holding on to just under 13 bigs. Now let's have a look at the payouts. All of these players have locked up at least $154,000, but as you can see, the money jumps are significant. Leading up to that first place prize of $900,100, and of course, the Guitar Tower Trophy. So with seven players left, whoever gets eliminated next at this final table will go home with $154,000. And by the time we're done with this, as you mentioned, Lexi, $900,000 wow. for first place. Yep. These players are playing for big money. And fun fact, I actually got 14th place in this event one year for $40,000 and first was a million dollars. I lost aces to aces all in pre. Well, it's a good thing you've forgotten about that. <laughs> I still dream about it every night. <laughs> All right, the blinds are 50,000, 100,000. Stakes are high. You can definitely feel the pressure in this room. So we got started here with Chris Brewer raising with ace king of clubs. We then got called by Hernandez. Justin Liberto raises to just over a million. I really like the three bet with this hand. It doesn't play well as a flat and has good removal with the ace, so he's blocking some of his opponent's snap calls. Little does he know, Brewer has ace queen. And Brewer calls. I'm guessing we're gonna see Hernandez get out of the way here. Yeah, and that's what he does. So now heads up. Brewer is definitely at the top of his range. Flops 10, 3, 4, diamonds. Pretty bad board for both players. Liberto does have a gut shot and a 5 high flush draw. Brewer totally bricked. That's a scary flop to bet. A bet there from Liberto takes the first hand of this final table down. Usually on Poker Night in America, it's loosey-goosey, having a good time, cocktails, 25, 50 blinds. Uh, this is a whole different ballgame, Lexi. Yeah, you can definitely cut the pressure with a knife here. There is big money on the line. All right, we have Gianquitti here with Solid. King Queen Eight. off. And he shoves for about 13 big blinds here. Idol folds, Hernandez folds. Alapi waking up with pocket jacks here. 
Just a couple of players left behind you. You would think this would be an easy call. Yep, makes the call. Alberto folds. Steinman folds over to Brewer. He will fold Queen Jack. And it's off to the races. They are flipping for Gianquitti's life. Well, and because some of the hands that uh, have already been burned, Gianquitti's a little bit further behind than he probably thinks he is right now. Flop is Jack 9 6. Wow, gut shot for Gianquitti, but top set for Colopy. Turns a three. The game. And the river is a king. And Colopy holds, and great game for Gene Quiddy. Played so well, and is taking home a really nice payday. Disappointing, you get to this point of the tournament, you know you're close, but at the same time, it seems like that first place is so far away. So Ryan Gene Quiddy is finishing in seventh place for $154,000. And with that win, Jim Colopy now up over 10 million in chips. All right, Lexi, now six players at the final table. Got a little bit more money coming if you go out for sixth place, uh, 186,000. So, you know, about $30,000 difference for everybody who survived that last hand. Yeah. So the blinds are now 75, 125,000. All right, Chris Brewer making a pretty loose open here on the button with the Jack Deuce of Clubs. But the fewer the players, the wider the ranges are, so you have to play more hands as more players get knocked out. Ido thinks it over, but folds over to Hernandez with pocket threes. These are two players that are kind of at the middle to the bottom of the chip counts. How does that affect their decision making? It's going to be higher variance for the shorter stacks because they're more incentivized to shove all in with small stacks. Which I wonder if Hernandez was contemplating that right there in this spot. But he elects to call and the flop is three, six, eight. What a call it was. He flops bottom set, but Brewer's got a lot of options here. Yeah, this is a pretty draw heavy texture. With bottom set, I like to fast play it since you're not blocking top and middle pair, and you want to really charge your opponent for their draws. So Chris Brewer bets 450,000. All right, I love this raise here. Like I said, fast playing bottom set is definitely the way to go on a wet texture. So it's 800000 now for Brewer to call, and I must say that is maybe the most scrumptious mullet we've ever seen on Poker Night in America. Mullets are making a comeback. I mean, obviously the man owns a mirror. Like, he knows he's rocking the mullet. I mean, I think he knows it's there. All right, well, right now he's thinking about rocking this 800000 call with his flush draw. He's just doing some calculations in his head, making sure he's getting the right price to try to hit his flush. Makes the call. All right. So now 3.2 million in the middle as we head to the turn. Brick City for Brewer. Great turn for Hernandez. So Brewer has nine outs to hit his flush, which is around 20% equity in this situation. much is it? All the chips are in the middle. It's 2.675. 2.675. So he's getting about two to one on a call here. If you're a brewer and make this call and you're wrong and you don't hit, I don't want to say it's over, but now you got to start climbing up a very steep hill once again. Makes the fold. Good oh. lay down. Anybody else want a rabbit? Anyone else want a rabbit real bad? Nice hand for Hernandez. Six hand of play will resume when we return. Welcome back to the Seminole Hard Rock Poker Open Championship final table. Before the break, we said goodbye to Ryan G and Quiddy in seventh place. The next player to be eliminated will take home a little over 186,000. Let's get back to the action. Well, 
Waiting on Hernandez here with ace eight suited. And he's going to raise to 250. Liberto sharing heart outs here. I must say, I like Liberto's chip stack look. It looks very menacing. Very neat and organized. I wonder if he has a background in architecture. All right, three bets from the small blind. A lot of solo players like the three bet or fold only strategy from the small blind. So this hand is a little bit hard to play as a flat. Plus, then you're giving the big blind incentive to squeeze you out of the pot. Well, here the big blind folded, and so the action's back to Hernandez. Makes the call. Now, Liberto is live with king six, but in the cards, he's beat. I mean, <laughs> the hearts are beat. You know, he's got the undercard. He's going to need to hit a pair, yep. Yeah, yeah. Flop is queen high, and there are no hearts to be found. Hernandez does have middle pair here, top kicker. Justin should continuation bet because his hand isn't strong enough to check calls, so he's going to try to end the action here on the flop. Puts in a small bet of 425000 Hernandez makes the call. And now Hernandez has two pair, aces and eights. I wonder if Justin's going to continue bluffing this because it's a good scare card on the turn. It's going to make it difficult for Hernandez's middling pairs, pocket tens, things like that, to call. It looks like he's ready to fire another one here. 1.025 million is the bet. This is a great spot for Hernandez because it does look like Liberto can have a lot of ace-king type combos, maybe ace-jack. He could have ace-queen, which is scary for Hernandez, but Hernandez has to be feeling pretty good here. Another million goes in the middle, and so now this pot just under five million, and we're going to the river. Well, <laughs> Liberto, what are we going to do now? He got himself in a dicey little situation here. Decides to give up. Now the question is, how much should Hernandez bet to get value from what he thinks could be some pairs? Decides to check it back. And the crowd goes wild. <laughs> Hernandez doing his happy dance. So I guess in that last hand, Hernandez is relying on the, you put out a bet, the only hand that's going to call you maybe is one that you're losing to. Yeah, I'm Theory, a, little, you know. a little surprised by his check back there. I think he could have gotten a lot of value from some, you know, like I said, ace-king type combos. But I also think it's a decent spot to kind of check and play small ball because the stakes are so high. This is it. Here we go. We have an all-in from Steinman with aces. Chris Brewer has pocket tens. Can't imagine he's going to go anywhere with this hand. Uh, Steinman, the short stack here at the table. And Steinman's all-in is for about nine big blinds, so shoving is definitely the right play here with pocket aces. Brewer looks him up. King-queen for Hernandez. Makes a good fold. Now out of the big blind, Jack Deuce from Colopy is going to get I've folded. The goods. So we'll be heads up. <laughs> I run so bad at final tables. All right, this is roughly 80-20 here. Pay the turn. Chris Brewer is going to need a 10 to win this oh, pot. Yeah. And yeah. Wow. Oh, oh. This shows you can do everything it. right in she poker and forth. still lose. You're running really bad, buddy. <laughs> ace, ace on the river, please. He's retired. Ace he from space. Oh. Good game. Tough beat nice for Steinman. Good luck, man. Good, Good luck, everybody. <laughs> yeah, like, and right away, too. Like, not even the hope to continue to make. Nope, just no. right away. I almost prefer it happens like that. It's better to just put me out of my misery on the flop. Don't river me. I got it in good. What else can I do?
It stinks bad. Remember that Steinman has $186,000 for his sixth place finish. Great game. Our five-handed final table will return right after this. Welcome back to the five-handed play here at the Seminole Hard Rock Poker Open Championship final table. Each player is currently guaranteed at least $231,000 in prize money. Good luck to everyone. Let's get back to the table. You would think for as much money as they're guaranteed, you'd see some of these players smiling, but they all have their game face on. All right, Justin Liberto calls in the small blind with nine deuce off. Brewer checks with the nine eight. Now, Lexi, I know you have a ton of tournament experience. When you get into tournaments, I know you're always thinking, right, I'm going to win. Nobody goes in hoping they're going to win. No, they think they're going to win, right. right? But at what point does it really become reality? You know, as more and more players drop out, it becomes more real feeling. Um, I try to stay as humble as I possibly can when I go deep in a tournament and just try to play the best possible poker I can. All right, so Liberto made a bet on the flop of 175000 and Brewer made the call with his open-ended straight draw and hits it on the turn. Liberto is going to take another stab at it with 400000 on the turn. All right, Brewer just makes the call. Sneaky, sneaky. Well, the river is a deuce, but maybe more importantly, it is a spade. So that could put the possible flush out there. Right, and with Liberto unblocking spades, he may decide to check here. 1.5 million in the pot here. Brewer thinking, how much can I squeeze out of my opponent? Two million. Big polarizing Ooh. over bet here. This is meant to look like he may have bricked a diamond flush draw or a hand like queen jack. He also unblocks a lot of king and 10 combos that Justin could have, so that's why this bet is so big to get called by those hands. Is Justin really considering making a call with his pair of deuces here? That would be pretty sick. Makes the call. Mm. Yes, sir. Yikes. And to think that small bet on the flop of just 175,000, right? That got him there to win that huge pot of over six million in chips. Yeah, that was a limp pot pre-flop, and I definitely admire Justin's call, especially unblocking the draws that he could be bluffing with, so I do think that that play is gonna work a large portion of the time he just happened to have at that time. All right, Justin Liberto raising it up with king seven of diamonds to 300,000. $5,300 buy-in for this Main event, anytime they have their uh, their big events here, all kinds of different ranges that people can buy in for. That's one of the things that makes Seminole Hard Rock here in Hollywood so popular. Yep. They have a great series with buy-ins as small as $200 all the way up to 25Ks. So this hand is Hernandez and Liberto once again. Flop is Jack-10-7, both of them hitting that seven. On the last hand, it was Hernandez who was in position. Now those roles have been switched. Liberto in position now. They both check. I like Liberto's check back on the turn. No need to reopen the betting with bottom pair. Deuce of hearts on the turn now. Check from Hernandez. And another check. So this pot staying small as we get to the river. The queen of clubs brings in the flush and some straights. It's pretty easy to think that neither player would have 9-8 in this hand because the pot is so small. I would imagine there would be some bets and re-raises. So they can probably eliminate those hands from each other's range. All right, so very small bet here from Liberto. Kind of mind-blowing. Not sure if this is a value bet or if he's turning his pair into a bluff. Kind of hard to get called by worse, so I would imagine this is a bluff targeting some jack and 10 combos to fold, but the queen does bring in some two pairs like queen jack and queen 10, so this is trippy. Wow. Mm. Next level. 675,000 chip raise from Hernandez. And a rather wow. quick call from Liberto. And Liberto takes it. 
Not only did he get the chips, but he also got a little information because he got to see Hernandez's hand. Yes, sir. And it's not that often when people bluff Ray's Rivers because it looks so strong, but he just had a soul read there. A nice call there from Liberto as he remains atop our leaderboard. Let's take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back with our coverage from the championship final table here at Seminole Hard Rock when we return. Welcome back to Poker Night in America's coverage of the championship final table here at the Seminole Hard Rock. Earlier this evening, we lost Ryan Gianquitti in seventh and Yuga Steinman in sixth. Sergio Ido is currently our only short stack with the blinds at 75 and 150K with that 150,000 big blind ante. Brewer folds over to Ido. Another very accomplished player, Ido with over $15 million in live tournament earnings. Min raises with ace king off to 300K. This looks like a cooler situation here. Hernandez with the ace queen of hearts. Mm. Well, Hernandez did raise it up to 1.1 million, so the action's back open to Ido. Holding. And he's not waiting around. He's all in, and a very quick call from Hernandez. So this is roughly a 20 big blind shove from Ido here. And he is in pretty good shape with 64% chance of winning this hand. Now, these are two of the short stacks at the table would be combining. The flop is deuce three, king, just one heart for Hernandez. And the turn is a jack. So a couple more outs for Hernandez. So Ido is going to double up. But now Hernandez went from that, okay, I feel good with this stack, to I hate the amount of chips that I have in front of me, right? Right. Very swingy day. You get to this point after playing through 1,100 players and you get down to the final five, is it easy to be patient or is it harder than ever to be patient at this point? A little bit of both, and these players must be so exhausted because they've been grinding every day for the last five days, and these are long hours. Whoever says poker isn't a sport is really mistaken. All right, well, on a decision right now is Chris Brewer in seat one here, deciding what to do with king-queen offsuit, and the decision is to fold. So we had a raise from Colopy with king-jack and a call from Liberto with the king-queen. So these two will tangle again. And here comes the flop. It's jack, six, king. Top pair for Justin Liberto, but two pair for Colope. Sneaky check there. All right, pretty small bet from Justin Liberto, 250,000. And there's the call from Colopy. So the turn now comes out eight of diamonds. That's as safe as it gets for both players' hands. In this type of situation, you have to really pay attention to everything that every player is doing, their mannerisms, but you also have to make sure that you're not giving away any tells either. Really try to make yourself as unexploitable as possible. Well, Liberto decides that 1.325 million is going to be the bet here on the turn. I'm thinking it's time for Colopy to put in a check raise here for value. I would say somewhere around maybe 2.5x Liberto's bet. Just a, a, a little bit on the smaller side to really reel him in, give him a good price to call with his what he thinks could be some drawing hands. 
but he might decide to play it sneaky and just call again. Let Liberto continue to bluff into him. Even though in this situation, Liberto doesn't believe he's bluffing, he's, he believes he's value betting. All right, he does in fact put in the check raise here. Raises to four million. I like that sizing a lot. It's pretty excessive, James. <laughs> And what a great snap fold from Liberto. If it were me, I would have thought about it a little bit longer. But I think these players are about to go on break, and maybe he had to go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> well, Liberto didn't look too happy after losing that hand. Is that a bunch of different things that are playing in there? They probably have all different emotions going yeah. on right now. <laughs> they don't know what to feel. All right, we continue on blinds up to 100 and 200,000. Also keep in mind that that big blind is putting in the 200 chip ante as well. And Colopy looking at pocket sixes, deciding if he wants to call the raise from Ido. He does in fact make the call. Justin Liberto with a six of hearts here, thinking about making a move. Makes the call as well. All right, so three players see the flop together, which is seven, seven, deuce. So we have the nut flush draw for Liberto here, and pretty good flop for pocket sixes. He's probably not going to be able to get away from this. Might have to put in one, one bet here. The turn is another heart, so now Liberto has the flush. But you deal with the paired board. Colopy is playing it well. He's putting in another check, possibly planning on check calling. I think it's time for Liberto to start building this pot. And he does. That's 650,000. Well, the last couple of minutes, this end of the table has had all of the action. And the decision's back on Colopy. Makes the call. Yeah, I really agree with something you said earlier about just trying to control the pot size here, not letting it get away from you. Right. So this is kind of an action killer, the fourth heart on the river here. Yeah, especially no heart for Colopy, so he knows that. I mean, there's many ways he is toast here. Half a million the bet from Liberto. This is a pretty small bet size here. He's really trying to get some non-heart pair type hands to call like pocket sixes or even a seven. He knows without a heart, it'll be really hard for Colby to call a big bet. Wow, makes the hero call. I definitely admire the heart, especially when the stakes are so high. You just have to go with your gut and if you're wrong, oh well. Poker Night in America's coverage of the championship final table here at the Seminole Hard Rock will continue after this break. Well, the top is separating from the bottom, like some cream coming to the top here, Lexi. Uh, you've got 15 and 12 million, and then you've got half of that for the players that are below. Yeah, we've definitely seen some exciting poker here today. Again, the stakes are so high, and these players are playing really well considering the pressure of the situation. Already with two eliminations at this final table, and the next person who leaves will go out in fifth place, and their $5,300 buy-in turns into $231,000. All right, so we're back to this now. Brewer raises with king-queen off. Gets called from Ido with ace queen off. And now over to the big blind, Liberto, with 200,000 more to call. He for sure is calling, if not maybe raising. It's definitely not a bad squeeze spot, especially with the king blocker. He's blocking some of their calls, like ace king, king queen, things like that. So I think what you're saying is you're not going to be surprised if he raises here. Exactly. <laughs> In a nutshell. 
Well, here comes the raise you were anticipating, and it is to 1.725 million. Yep, I love this. I love this sizing. He knows he's up against pretty wide ranges. He got one quick fold, but now Ido has the decision to make with ace queen. In case you guys are wondering what the chip denominations are, those blues are 25,000 and the yellow orange are 100 Ks. All in. And all in and a snap fold. How's that? Come on, you guys, you're playing for huge money. How about some smiles? <laughs> if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. Yeah, there has been uh, very little rejoicing at all. Uh, Hernandez showed a little bit of uh, excitement earlier when he won a hand, but boy, they are, uh, they are all dialed in. So here we have pocket rockets from Ido, raising it up to 400K. 200,000 for Liberto. No problemo, even with jack eight. Yep, when you're at a shorthanded table, you really have to defend your blinds pretty widely. Ace, 10, seven, the flop. So top set for Ido and a gut shot for Liberto. I can't imagine Liberto not calling a C bet on the flop here. 350 from Ido is the bet. This is a great board for the big blinds range as well because he is gonna have a lot of straight jaws. You know, hands like 9A, maybe queen jack suited, things like that are all gonna be calling and floating the flop. Deuce of hearts on the turn. After Liberto checks, Ido deciding what to do. I'm guessing there's gonna be no free rivers. He may consider checking if he doesn't think he's gonna get three streets of value, which he does. Oh, wow, okay. It's hard to get called when you're blocking top pair so heavily. So unless he does have some kind of straight draw, it's hard for him to get three streets here. All right, so a three of spades came on the river. Liberto is first. And he's choosing the wrong time to bluff here. The only hand that beats Ido is 4-5, and it's highly unlikely that Liberto has 4-5 because he's not calling those hands on the flop. And puts in the raise to 1.45 million and gets a snap fold from Liberto. Nice hand, look. Ido is a silent assassin over there, just chipping up and chipping up. And yeah. yeah. We mentioned not that long ago, it seems like he was fairly quiet at this final table, and now the last, you know, 20 minutes or so, he's been really driving the action. Yep, he had that nice double up earlier with the ace, king to ace, queen. All right, folds around to the button. Call up, he has ace, king off. Raises it up to 425,000 now. Chris Brewer in the big blind with the jack 10 off. And makes the call. Two players together to the flop. And the flop is 7-3-10 with two hearts. So top pair for Brewer and nothing but two overs and the ace of hearts blocker for Colopy. I check and now the turn is another 10. So this gives Brewer trips and Colopy the nut flush draw now. With 1.15 million in the pot, his bet is 450,000. All right, so just over two million now in the pot as the <laughs> river is a queen of hearts. Yep, this now gives Colopy oh. the nut flush. Oh. And this is one of those situations where I don't think you can really identify that he did anything wrong. No, these hands definitely played themselves. And uh, let's see what sizing Colopy decides to go here. I think this is gonna be a oh. small bet. Oh. I was wrong. Yeah, he's all <laughs> in. And look at poor Brewer. Mm, he's just so insanely bad today. And you guys have just bluffed me every hand. Yeah, Brewer is not mm, happy. I really have not on a hand. Oh. Ouch. Oh, my. It's the kind of situation that'll make you pull your hair out, am I right? Oh my, oh, my. This is so dumb. Fold. Mm. Announces the fold. Oh. It's a great fold. It's a tough spot, but... 
don't think there's anything really different he could do other than maybe go see a barb. <laughs> Don't go anywhere because Poker Night in America's coverage of the championship final table here at the Seminole Hard Rock will continue after the break. Poker Night in America is brought to you by Bet Rivers. Welcome back to our continuing coverage of the Seminole Hard Rock Championship final table. Now, Lexi, the table dynamic has shifted a bit. Absolutely. Sergio Ido has picked up some good hands and methodically extracted a lot of value in spots where I don't think many players can. Meanwhile, this is just not Chris Brewer's day as he keeps finding himself in these in-between spots that keep causing him to bleed away chips slowly. He's now the table short stack as we continue five-handed play. $900,000 is the first place prize here for the main event. $5,300 buy-in. Great spot for Chris Brewer to wake up with ace-king suited here. Puts in the min raise to 400000 And Ido happens to wake up with ace-queen off. I imagine Ido is going to three-bet this and try to isolate Brewer to an all-in pot. Yep, and he does, in fact, put in the three-bet. One mil, 25 Relatively small three bet size, but when the stacks are shorter, you can go smaller with your three bets. Yeah, there would be no sense in him just calling, so he moves all in. Ido quickly calls, and so Brewers Tournament Life on the line, but he's ahead, looking for that double up. Oh my, you got it. He's shouting, no queen, no queen. <laughs> I can, know the feeling, Brewer. You can feel it. And the flop is king, seven, jack. Yeah, Always a sweat out. because now Ido has a gut shot to Broadway. Never easy. And the turn is a nine. So far, so clean. And will Brewer stay alive? He will. The river's another king. And so now Brewer doubles up to 6.1 million. Yep, that was just a wrong place, Same wrong thing. time for Ido. The other thing I love that when you come to Seminole Hard Rock and you see a lot of these tournaments is a bunch of international flair, right? Like this is a worldwide game and you, get, you see it represented at every table. Absolutely. Players from all over the world fly in for this amazing event. It is definitely a melting pot of a tournament. So here we have Pocket Cowboys, King King for Colopy and Justin Liberto with the Ace Jack off. More fireworks between these two. I don't think that anyone has played more tonight together than these two down at the end of the table. Right. It is the battle of the big stacks. All right. And Liberto makes the call. 1.7 million in the pot as we head to the flop. It's 7, 8, 10. So Colopy's pocket kings are still good. Liberto does have an over and a gut shot straight. So Colopy does decide to check and pot control this relatively wet texture here. And Liberto does put out a 350,000 chip bet. And a call from Colopy. So now the turn is the queen of diamonds giving Liberto a double gutter. He can hit a king or a nine for a straight. Colopy checks. All right, Justin Liberto puts out a bet of a million chips. He is continuing his story of strength here. He can certainly have a lot of straights. He can have some jack nine suited. He can have some nine six suited. He has a lot of two pairs like queen 10, queen eight suited, 10 eight. So he definitely can represent this board pretty well. But as we can see, we Know that colopy has got a pair of kings, which right now is the best hand as we head to the river. As Colopy calls, and the river's a meaningless deuce of clubs. Colopy probably isn't too comfortable with his kings on this board. Now the question is, is Liberto going to fire another barrel, or is he going to check and give up? He gives up. And Pocket Kings takes it. So 4.5 million chips are going to go into the stack of Colopy as he is pushing towards that nearly million-dollar payday here tonight. A 
on Poker Night in America. All right, Lexi, we've had some cash games here that you've been part of. We've now had the tournament that you've been a part of. Which do you like commentating better? I would have to say this is probably more exciting just in the sense that they're playing for a lot more money, but the cash games, there's a lot more trolling, a lot more joking, <laughs> and the wine is flowing, so it's a toss-up. All right, Hernandez raising it up with the King Jack off here. Folds around to Liberto with the Ace-10. He folds over to Chris Brewer. Brewer's got Ace-6. Ace six and ace seven are actually the worst aces. I hate when I get them. It's just, there's no right thing to do. Calling stinks, folding stinks. <laughs> Flop is ace seven queen, so Brewer's ace six gets even better. All right, Hernandez bets 350,000. Hernandez does have a gut shot to Broadway. Brewer with top pair makes the call. Okay, so now just over two million chips as we head to the turn, which is a deuce of hearts. Pretty irrelevant turn card, doesn't change the board texture in any way. It does bring in a backdoor flush draw. Okay, bets 975,000, putting Brewer in a difficult spot here. And you also have to start thinking about the bets that people make, what size of the stack is that that they're betting? And for Hernandez to put in 975,000 of his chip stack, yeah, it's, it's an indication he's, he's not going anywhere. Yeah, these big bets create small stack to pot ratios, which incentivizes you to shove wider. All right, so the river is a jack of hearts after Brewer called the turn. So Hernandez does now pick up a pair, and it goes check, check, and Brewer is going to take it down. So much for being the short stock. <laughs> a great run there for Chris Brewer puts him back in a comfortable position to chase this title. Poker Night America's coverage of the championship final table here at the Seminole Hard Rock will continue in just a moment. Welcome back to our continuing coverage of the Seminole Hard Rock Championship Final Table. This evening's coverage is coming to an end, but on the next episode of Poker Night, we'll be playing down to a champion. That's right, Chris. As those blinds creep up higher and higher, we're going to see more pressure applied on every single decision faced by these final five. Here's how things currently stand with Jim Colopy now in firm control of the chip lead. Our big stack has 17 million. Our short stack, a lot less, just 1.6 million. That's the difference between Jim Colopy at the top and Raul Hernandez at the bottom. It's anybody's game. The variance is high, the stakes are high, and the excitement is up. Yeah, these five players are all that's left after 1,110 got started four days ago, playing on the fifth day, trying to bring home $900,000 for first place. I can't wait to see how things shake out, but we're gonna have to wait until our coverage continues next time. For everyone here at Poker Night in America, along with Lexi Gavin Mather, I'm Chris Hansen. We'll see you next time. Hey, if you like this video from season whatever from Poker Night in America, there are at least 41 other seasons, and we've got every episode here on our page at your disposal. Go to town, but make sure you hit like and subscribe.